here. A great return to me is, is to see the improvement, especially young men that uh, or young guys that, that first year players that uh, have never played football and then all of a sudden the light bulb goes off and all of a sudden, gosh, the enthusiasm is there and they just love the game of football and, uh, and they're open to the techniques that we're trying to show them. And that, that's a great fulfillment to me. In our practices, what we're trying to accomplish is we want the kids to be ready for the game, obviously. So we have to we have to create almost game-like atmosphere in practice where it's a real intense practice. We push them really hard. We don't let them uh, lack uh, lag off and just not work hard at all. But it's we really push them. So we're we'll be in their face. Uh, we'll be talking to them just like we would in a game situation where it's very intense. And we, we try to make our practices so difficult that when they get into the game, that's really a piece of cake. It's, it's the easy part. The Oklahoma drill, boy, I tell you, the guys really look forward to this every year. It's the first thing we get to do in full pads. Uh, we, this is the first hitting drill we do every year and what we do is we line up an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman, and then we have a linebacker, a defensive back, and a running back. And on the, on the cadence, uh, the offensive lineman and running back have already decided which side of the ball they're going to run to and on the cadence they take off, the lineman blocks and the running back is supposed to run between the cones and it's the defensive guy's job to shed the blocker and to, to make a tackle. Now, the things that us coaches are looking for are the enthusiasm of the kids, wanting to hit, we want to see who wants to hit, who, who doesn't want to hit. Um, we want to see uh, good technique both on offense and defense uh, as far as tackling form and, and uh, we're looking for some big hits out there on defense and um, usually every year we are really really excited about uh, the Oklahomans. Um, I know the players would want to do that every day if we let them. They, Monday through Thursday, if we let them do Oklahomans, they would, they would be jumping up and down. But we do need to save a little bit of hitting for uh, Friday nights. Practice uh, gives us opportunity to uh, make our mistakes as many times as we want to make them because this is where we want to make them at is on the practice field. And just uh, the repetitions of going over place uh, so that we, we could execute, in, uh, which is our first scrimmage Friday against Aquinas and then our first game was uh, September 11th in Mammoth. Um, as far as uh, my group of kids, I want to um, have them prepared uh, daily and weekly uh, as a little routine. as uh, teaching them the blocks and the fundamentals of their position and having them ready so that it gives them every advantage against their opponents they're playing. First game is always uh, an exciting time because the kids have worked hard and 
and we we've really pushed them and and yet we know there's just a lot of areas that we're still not totally ready yet and so it, it brings a lot of extra jitters for the for the coaching staff and so for me I, I just I, I'm excited about thinking about that first game and just getting up there and we know that we're going to play at 8,000 feet which means that uh, we're going to have some real conditioning problems which concerns me greatly and yet I know that if we have enough effort from each of our kids and we can rotate our kids well enough I feel like we're going to we're going to do very well. As far as leading up to the first game, I anticipate uh, uh, little butterflies in the stomach, uh, not only from the players, but from the coaches. Uh, I hope that uh, we're, we limit our mistakes up in Mammoth. Uh, I hope that from the 23rd until the 11th that uh, we've prepared them up there, that uh, we've got them ready enough and prepared them enough to be ready for that game. And uh, just with the good attitude we've had from all these kids out here and the coaching staff, I think uh, we will be okay. And I think uh, hopefully we'll come out with a W. The first game of the season is always one that brings uh, much anxiety to the coaching staff. We're hoping that we put the right players in the right positions to uh, maximize their talents and, uh, and, and hopefully we've, we've done a good job at, at matching what they do best with what that position requires. Uh, for myself, um, there's more excitement in that first game than, um, than most of the other games of the season except for uh, when playoffs roll around. Um, it is just the, the smell of the grass, the smell of the air, the, the sound of the guys getting ready. Um, you know, there's some excitement, but yet there's that anxiety again that, man, I'm hoping that I did the right things with these guys and that we're teaching them the right kind of techniques to be successful. The thing you always remember about your first game is you've got those nervous butterflies, but you're really pumped up. And I know I always look forward to that first contact, you know, especially on defense. You're playing defense, that first hit is just, and after that it's just, you're in heaven. Because you're waiting for that first contact and you're excited, you get out there and, the, and you start playing. And the, that first game is when you finally get to show what you can do out there. And I think that's what everybody out here is waiting to see, is get out there and really start playing and see what we can do this year. And, uh, I know I always, that first game is always the best. You know, you get, you get that first game in and that adrenaline rush and it's the best. That first hit when you really hit helmet to helmet, you, you hear the crack and maybe you get a little, even get a little flash of light sometimes when you get you get helmet to helmet. And once they get that first hit, man, they're all game dude, man. It's all game dude. It's that first hit. First game of the season for me has always uh, been the same as when I play and as I coach. Great big butterflies in your stomach. Uh, the thrill of walking out on the field and all the people cheering for you. It's, um, it's, it's like no other. It's, it's, a, it's one of the best feelings in the world to have. I just wish that everybody could be at our games all the time because, because of how emotional and how special uh, it is to be a part of the ACA program. If you, uh, if you come, 
uh, you get to see Big Ben waving his towel and urging on the crowd and going crazy and, and just loving and supporting these kids no matter what if it's putting a band-aid on on a, on a scrape or or just giving them a great big hug when they come off the field after making a great play and, and supporting them when they're disappointed um, I wish that you'd all could be a part of this uh, just as I have been first game of the season uh, is certainly an exciting point it's, uh, and it's going to be exciting up in Mammoth with the fresh air and the clean thin air um, a lot of young guys that don't know what to expect and, and uh, it's in the afternoon so we won't have the bright lights that type of thing but even still it'll, it'll be quite a pump up um, the intensity will be there it'll be great to see uh, whether execution of what we've gone through all spring training all summer long through purgatory week to see if the boys all uh, all bond and uh, should the score should we get a little behind the score to see whether these boys have the character and set the tone for the season as to the character that they may have uh, to be able to pull themselves together as a team and, uh, and face adversity to, uh, to possibly come out and, and certainly we plan to win, we plan to beat Mammoth, but it'll be interesting to see a test of character in that first game. Uh, it, it certainly sets a point to the coach's mind, I know it does mine, as to uh, what our nature, what our character is made of. Our stretching program is, is very good. We feel like our, uh, our summer conditioning program uh, leads into our stretching program. We work real hard with the kids through their weight training, through the ply our plyometric and running program, and then with our stretching program. We've designed our stretching program to hit certain muscles uh, in more than one time. Our coaches uh, have done a great job at picking this up. We, uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of conversations about how we can stretch better so that we can uh, keep kids from pulling muscles, uh, keep kids loose uh, and preventing injury. Um, they're just really dedicated at making sure that the kids do this right and do this well. And our kids are, are just really fantastic kids. They want to do the right thing. They, want, they understand what it takes to, to be a, a very competitive athlete and compete at a high level. Uh, and, and everyone expects us to compete at that kind of level now. Um, so they're willing to take, uh, take good instruction and, and learn what it is that they need to do to stay healthy.
Halftime adjustments are so important because if, if you don't adjust, then the other team's going to beat you, chances are. You know? So you've got to make those adjustments, and that's why it's so important to talk to each of the kids and make sure that, that we're getting correct information from them, what the kid is uh, on the other side is doing to him. And so once we do that, then we can tell the kids what we want them to do. And, uh, and, and then my, my whole thing at halftime is we've got to make those adjustments. And if I need to fire them up, then I'm going to fire them up. Sometimes they need it, other times they don't. They're fired up enough, and, and I just I just say a few words of, okay, guys, we know what we need to do. Let's just go out and do it. And uh, we, we've talked about it. Uh, we've talked enough. Now let's, let's let our action show out in the field. So those kinds of things are really – I'm not a – I'm not a real emotional type of a, a high, uh, high uh, concentrating type of coach where I just uh, really yell and holler at the kids. That's not my style. I'm very much low key. Uh, but there are times where I really got to get the kids going, and so I will. But most of the time, I'm pretty low key with the kids.
Our program has definite high goals in mind. We, uh, we do a goal setting uh, session with, with all our kids every year and, and they fill out a form and they, they talk about what they want out of the program. The goals that we as coaches set uh, for our program is very, very high because of the championships that we've won and, and the fact that uh, we've had so much success in such a short time. We set our goals high. Uh, we, we, we schedule very difficult opponents. We don't, we don't allow a lot of patsy schedules uh, like some teams might want to do to, uh, to pad their stats. So the fact that, that we don't always go uh, undefeated or uh, with one, one victory or one loss uh, uh, is, is significant and, and tells you where we have our sights set. If you ask our kids, our, our goals are going to be 14-0, league champions, CIF champions, state champions. We feel that if we don't commit ourselves to being the very best at all the time, then we're settling for something less than God has called us to be. Um, people sometimes have a hard time understanding that being a godly Christian and being, being, a, uh, being in a violent sport, is sometimes uh, uh, they have a hard time kind of reconciling those two. We, uh, we feel that, that God has blessed us with, with great godly kids who have talents that we need to use for Him, and, and we're going to do that any way that we can. But we're not here just to win football games. We're here to be something special. We're here to witness to those people around us that ACA football is, is something special. And it's, it's not just to uh, beat up on the other teams and, and uh, just to rank uh, victories. But we're here uh, to do something special. We have ever, for the last four years in our football program, we have tried to get the kids to really write their goals down. We do this every season now. And, and our goal is very clear this year. We want to win another CIF championship. Now we've won two, and we, we just feel that every year we need to aim high, and, and so a CIF championship is definitely our goal. We're going to win the league, and then we're going to win the CIF championship. And, and so. That, that's what we're aiming for and it's a lot of teams they aim for hoping to get to the playoffs but for us we aim for league championship and CIF championship and, and so that's what we the kids expect they expect to be there they expect to expect to play 14 games this year and uh, I like that and, and it, it's a good goal and so we talk about in our goals how do we accomplish the specific things we have to do and of course a big part is our work ethic and as some of the other things we've talked about already, but our work ethic and, and uh, w not only working hard on the field, but working hard off the field so we don't get in trouble and those kinds of things help us to accomplish that goal of being 14 and 0.
Halftime is a time for us to make adjustments. Offensively, with this kind of offense, teams throw many different fronts at us. And they're trying anything they can to stop us from running the ball. And so at halftime, we get into to the locker room and, and we draw up what they're doing and what kind of personnel they have. And is, if one particular guy is giving us more trouble than somebody else, then, then, then we'll decide to double team that guy. Um, other, you know, the adjustments are the biggest thing, the blocking adjustments. Um, and this year, I'm also responsible for the defense. So defensively, we need to start looking at what things that the other offense has been successful at if they're shut in, if, and what we need to shut down. Um, we have formed a tra uh, tradition here at ACA of being a second half team. Um, if we're behind at halftime, then there might be just a little more fire in the voices of the coaches and getting those guys to play ACA kind of football. So depending on the score at the end of the first half and how we played, will really dictate the kind of tempo and attitude that the coaches have at halftime. As a team, our goal is to win a championship. A perfect season with the championship at the end is, is a great goal to shoot for. Um, on, a, on a personal note with our defensive backs, our goal is to uh, lead our league in interceptions. Yeah! <laughs> 
think what we're trying to really get across to our kids today is that they'll become better people. And we want to instill a work ethic in them that is going to help them as they go throughout the rest of their life because life is hard. It's not easy. And, and the kids need to learn to work hard. And, and if they do, they're going to be successful. They're going to be a winner off the field as well as they were on the field in our program. And so that, I, I'm really, I really want to see, I really hope that down the road, 14 years down the road, they'll look back and just realize what we instilled in them, that we've put some character in them so that they're, when they, they recall back what it's like, they're going, man, I, I really did learn a lot from that coaching staff and they helped me to become a better person. Uh, they gave me some standards for how I can live my life. And, and so I really hope that that will be a, a really important issue to them. First off, I just want to say that we got a lot of outstanding athletes on the team, and, and uh, I think it's up to us coaches to, to bring the, the positive things out of them and, and make it a great experience. Um, offensively, um, I hope we'll um, score a lot of runs. I hope that we score a lot of touchdowns, and uh, uh, the quarterbacks um, have outstanding quarterbacks this year, and, and, uh, and I think we're going to be very effective in many ways. Uh, we're, we're really depth in a lot of areas, but, but what we mainly want to do out of, out of the offense is to um, give them a good positive atmosphere and, and hope for, for great things this year and real positive. On the defensive part, I think to sum it up, you know, we got great defensive backs and, and uh, I think our main concern is just hit hard. Thank you. 
My goals for this football season, 1999, is first of all, I want to have some fun. I want these guys to know that they're playing a game and that they're just out there having a great time. But secondly, I would say that I'm a perfectionist and if you're going to do play a game, you should play it right and that you should do your job the right way every time. Well, I hope the kids accomplish a lot, not only as, uh, as individuals, but as a team. As I always tell them, I, uh, I tend to give them a little spelling quiz to spell the word team for me, and there's no I in team. It takes 11 men to win a football game. And just being together, the unity, and uh, knowing it does take 11 guys to win a football game and not one individual. Um, I hope uh, we set some goals as far as defense and offense, and uh, I hope uh, the goals that they set, these kids are able to reach by the end of the year.
and that's uh, basically a CIF championship. I hope that uh, the kids come to understand what's special about ACA's program. We have kids that trans transfer in from other schools, but most of our kids come right here in house. Uh, I think that the thing that I hope that they understand what's special about this group of coaches and, and our philosophy here at our school is that we really care deeply for these kids. They're not just players, they're not just football players, they're, they're young men, they're gentlemen. And I would hope that they would come to understand that that our commitment as a coaching staff to leading a life uh, that's pleasing in Christ will come across through how we interact with them. The fact that we don't get in their face and yank them by their face masks and, and call them demeaning names and, and that we treat them with a, with a sense of uh, honor and self-respect that we hope that they pick up. Those are all things that we feel our program, what sets our program apart from any program that's in, in the area or even any program that's in our league. Um, while we don't ever profess to be perfect, we know that, uh, that we're forgiven in Christ and that we want our kids to pick up on, on that theme and that as they live, live their life and hopefully someday come into uh, to also being coaches, that, uh, that they would remember that and, uh, and carry that legacy on. What I hope these kids will get out of the program here is number one, to, to be positive and to work hard uh, throughout life, not just here on the field, but throughout life. So we're trying to teach them um, many things that will help them in the future. Um, they uh, hopefully will get a lot of nice memories, fun memories. I'm sure they'll be fun and, and hard memories, but um, it'll, it'll give them something to look back on and, and think that it was well worth it. What I hope players leave ACA football with is, first of all, a sense that God is first. That here, at, football is, means a lot to us, but God is number one. And I would hope and pray that uh, football players would be able to see a godly example of how you could be a godly man and yet still be able to play a violent game. I'm hoping that uh, these players can see that uh, throughout the course of the season, no matter what happens, that God's in control, and, that, and that's what really binds us together. Um, it's been my blessing to, to be a part of this program, and um, I am so happy here, and, and, and that's what I want the guys to know, that, that football is a game, and that God is first. Mm -hmm.